Okay, here is a steady state sinusoidal, sinusoidal circuit analysis problem. In other words, here is a AC circuit. Uh, it's running uh, in a steady state. There are two voltage sources here. One is 20 cosine 10T plus 90 degrees. The other voltage source is the 10 cosine 10T volt. So uh, here, first thing we need to make sure is that both uh, power supplies in this is running at the same frequency. We do see that they are, and that that particular frequency omega is equal to 10 radians per second. Now that we've recognized that all supplies in the circuit are running in the same frequency, we can actually use the concept of phasors to simplify the trigonometric uh, uh, manipulations we would have had to do. So instead of doing things in the sine, cosine uh, domain or the trig domain, let's convert these voltage uh, sources to uh, their phasor equivalent. So 10 cosine 10 T plus 90 degrees, uh, can be written as a phasor with magnitude 20 and angle of 90 degrees. Similarly, the 10 cosine 10 T voltage source can be, in terms of its phasor representation, can be written as 10 angle 0 degrees as long as the frequency is 10 radians per second. Right? So that's the first thing. Second, we see an inductor and a capacitor. Now they're in the AC domain, so they are going to exhibit impedance. The impedance is frequency dependent. So for the inductor, the impedance of the inductor is given by J omega L. In this case, omega is 10 and L is 1. So we end up with J10 ohm, uh, J10 ohm uh, as the impedance of that inductor. Now for the capacitor, the capacitor impedance is given by 1 over J omega C. Sometimes it's 1 over J is also written as minus J, so it, we can write, out, write this out as minus J divided by omega C. In our case, omega is 10 and C is 1 over 50, so putting those there, we basically end up with negative 5J or negative J5 ohms, right? So, so we found the impedance of the inductor to be J10 ohms. We found the in impedance of the capacitor to be minus J5 ohm. And the impedance of the resistor is 10 ohms, right? So now we have a circuit all in a phasor domain representation. So here's our circuit. Now in order to find VA, we can, we're can we going to use nodal analysis. So in order to do that, let's just draw uh, our current directions here. So I'm going to pick uh, directions of current I1, I2, and I3 as shown there uh, in the circuit uh, right now. Uh, again, as you recall, these directions are arbitrary, and depending on the direction, uh, you'll get uh, val values for the voltage and the current uh, through different elements. Uh, the polarity might change, right? So in this case, I1 is facing from the power supply towards VA. I2 is also uh, flowing from the power supply towards VA, and I3 is flowing down towards a reference node uh, uh, through the inductor. Okay, so now it's a matter of uh, applying Kirchhoff's current law at node A, where it says I1 and I2 are the node current coming in, and those must equal the total current going out, which is I3. So we can write this as I1 plus I2 equals I3. Now I1 flows from 20 angle 90 degrees to VA through the 10 ohm. So we can write that as 20 angle 90 minus VA divided by the 10 ohm. Similarly, I2 is flowing from 10 angle 0 towards VA. So 10 angle 0 minus VA divided by the impedance of the capacitor right here. So minus J5. And the final current I3 is flowing from VA towards ground. So VA minus 0 divided by J10. Right. So we we have that now using algebra, algebraic simplification let's uh, basically separate out all the terms that have VAs and the terms that don't have VAs now if you look at this carefully this is a problem with a single node unknown and a single expression so it's just a matter of doing complex algebra manipulation right here on this problem so we have 20 angle 90 degrees divided by 10 plus 10 angle 0 minus J5 equals VA over J10 plus VA over 10 plus VA over minus J5. Now, angle 90 degrees basically means, if I grab my pen, on a real and imaginary axis, if I have my real axis here and my imaginary axis here, that's my imaginary axis right there, uh, 
20 angle 90 degrees basically means there is a vector that's of magnitude 20 right there at an angle of 90 degrees from the horizontal axis or the real axis. So that's what it means. So really, the imaginary axis is the J axis. So it's of magnitude 20 in the J axis. So 20 angle 90 degrees can also be written as 20 J. So that's where this 20 J uh, comes in here. So 20 J divided by 10. Similarly, 10 angle 0 degrees. So now if I say 10 angle 0 degrees, it's representing another vector right here of magnitude 10 at an angle of 0 degrees. So really, I'm only in the real axis. So that becomes 10 angle 0 degrees simply becomes 10. right? So that's the algebraic simplification I'm doing. Now I'm going to uh, do 20 divided by 10 gives me 2j. 10 divided by 5 gives me uh, 2. So I can write that as 2j minus 2 over j equals, uh, I collect the VA term and take it out. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is basically 1 over j is equal to minus j, right? So 1 over j is equal to minus j. Hence, I can write this minus 1 over j as simply j. So I can write this as 2j. So that is the 2j. Minus 2 over j becomes 2 over j. Uh, I'm sorry, minus 2 over j becomes 2j. Similarly, 1 over j becomes minus j, and 1 over minus j becomes plus j right here. Right? So that is because 1 over j is equal to minus j. Right? You can see this in the real complex axis and verify that that's actually correct. So the left-hand side is 4j. That's simple. Uh, using my complex algebra calculator, so I have a, I'm using my calculator, I find out that the real, well, in this case, the real is just 1 over 10 on the right hand side, right? So the real is just 1 over 10 on the right hand side and the imaginary is 1 over 5 minus 1 over 10 gives me plus 1 over 10 uh, j, right? So that's uh, what I have. Uh, so if I multiply both sides by 10, I get 40j equals VA 1 plus j. Uh, 40j is the same as saying 40 angle 90 degrees. And 1 plus j, uh, if I change that into polar coordinates, so 1 plus j into polar coordinates is basically square root of 2 with an angle of 45 degrees. So I basically convert these Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates, and that's what I get. So VA is essentially 40 angle 90 degrees divided by square root of 2 angle 45 degrees. Now when you have phasors, when you divide phasors, so the numerator and the denominator. So the magnitude basically divides itself. So the so the magnitude for VA is going to be 40 divided by square root of 2, which is going to come out to be 28.3. The angles, when they're divided, basically subtract. So the when two phasors divide each other, the angle subtracts. So the resulting angle becomes the top angle minus the bottom angle. So 90 degrees minus 45 degrees, which leads us to VA equals 28.3 angles 45 degrees volts. So this is the voltage at node A. This is the voltage at node A in the phasor domain. Now if you wanted to convert this to the time domain, we just need to remember that our omega was 10. Omega was 10 radians per second. So we can write down that the magnitude 28.3 is 28.3 cosine 10t plus the phase angle that we just calculated here, which is 45 degrees. So VA of time t in, in t is 28.3 cosine 10t plus 45 degrees, right? So that's basically the voltage across uh, the inductor or the voltage at node A for this particular problem.